Today's breaking story begins with an ex post that someone sent me this morning from the Midas Touch account that reads, This old clip of Donald Trump from the 90s needs to go viral. He's always been a racist freak. Thanks, Midas, and I'm on board, and I'll do my part in showing you guys that clip in just a minute. But my thought is, why stop there? Donald Trump has such a rich history of bigotry that much of it is forgotten and out of view due to the sheer volume of his racist rhetoric as a politician that began with the Obama birth certificate dog whistle. What's old is new again and as relevant as ever. So without further ado, I present today's video entitled The Top 4 Old Stories About Donald Trump's Racism That You May Have Forgotten About or Never Known That Need to Go Viral and reach the remaining swing voters so we can end his reign of racism once and for all. A whopper of a title, but it sets up a short list that I hope goes a long way in crushing his white nationalistic soul. And at the top of the list, I will reveal today's breaking story. And at number four, according to his first wife, Ivana, he kept a book of Hitler's speeches on his nightstand. Had told her lawyer that Donald Trump occasionally read from a book of Hitler's collected speeches, My New Order, and a friend of Trump told the magazine on the record that he had given Trump the book, saying he thought Trump would find it interesting. And if that wasn't cringe enough, his cousin and employee would click his heels and shout, Heil Hitler, every time he walked into Trump's office in an obvious nod to Trump's affinity for the Fuhrer. At number three, in the 1980s, Kip Brown, a former employee at Trump's castle, said, when Donald and Ivana came to the casino, the bosses would order all of the black people off the floor. It was the 80s. I was a teenager, but I remember it. They put us all in the back. And they did so because they knew Trump's preferences. So are you getting curious about what's number one? Even you news hawks may not have seen this archive clip before, but please stand by because it's coming up. And at number two, the most egregious incident on my list happened in 1989 and has been characterized as a modern day lynching. One Latino and four black teenagers, the Central Park Five, were accused of attacking and raping a jogger in New York City. Trump spent a small fortune running attack ads in papers demanding bring back the death penalty. The teen's convictions were later vacated after they spent 7 to 13 years in prison. After that terrible attack in Central Park, you spent a lot of money taking ads that seemed, Donald, to the casual reader, insightful, like Wow. Of course I hate these people. And let's all hate these people because maybe hate is what we need if we're going to get something done. And now for the moment you've been waiting for. Drum roll, please. The video that shows Trump has always been a racist freak shows his unfiltered and unhinged remarks about Indians. No, not his recent oddness about Kamala Harris's biracial roots or J.D. Vance's wife. In 1993, he had this to say about Native American casino ownership, and Representative George Miller was perhaps the first prominent Democrat to call him out for his obvious racism. Is this you discussing Indian blood? We're going to judge people by whether they have Indian blood, whether they're qualified to run a gaming casino or not? Uh, I, that probably is me, absolutely. Because I'll tell you what, if you look, if you look at some of the reservations that you've approved, you, sir, and your great wisdom have approved, I will tell you right now, uh, they don't look like Indians to me, and they don't look like the Indians. Now, maybe we say politically correct or not politically correct. They don't look like Indians to me, and they don't look like Indians to Indians. And a lot of people are laughing at it, and you're telling how tough it is, how rough it is to get approved. Well, you go up to Connecticut, and you look. Now, they don't look like Indians to me, sir. Thank God that's not the test of whether or not people have rights in this country or not, whether or not they pass your look test. Depends whether, yeah, depends whether or not you're approving it, sir. No, no, it's not a question of whether I'm approving it. It's not a question of whether I'm approving it. Mr. Trump, you know, you know in the history of this country where we've heard this discussion before, they don't look Jewish to me. Oh, really? They don't look well, Indian to me. They don't look Italian to me. Mm -hmm. And that was a test for whether people could go into business or not go into business, whether they could get a bank loan. You're too black. You're not black enough. I want to find out. That's you, not a, well, then why are you appro you're approving a, for Indian? Why don't you approve it for everybody then? That's not a if your case is non-discriminatory, why don't you approve for everybody? You're saying well, you only Indians. Wait a minute, you sir. Stand for it in five you're saying minutes. only Indians can have 
the reservations, only Indians can have the gaming. So why aren't you approving it for everybody? Why are you being discriminatory? Why is it that the Indians don't pay tax, but everybody else does? I do. Here at Occupy Democrats, we pride ourselves in covering breaking news. But I just covered four stories about Trump that are between 30 and 40 years old. So why are channels like ours and Midas Touch asking for these old clips to go viral? It's because there's still a sliver of the population that is undecided, and they will likely determine the outcome of the election. There they are, watching thinking, and eventually voting. And you know, they might not decide who to vote for until November 4th, the night before the election. And some will not vote with a well-informed opinion or political values. They will vote for who they think will win because it's a natural human desire to be on the winning side and the desire to avoid being on the losing side may be even a stronger motivator. It's sociology. So by keeping these stories fresh, shareable, and viral right up to election, day, we are sending a not-so-subtle social signal that a man with a history of racism is a loser, and no one wants to be on the loser's side when the dust clears on November 6th. So let's do what we can to keep these stories at the top of every news feed and top of mind for undecided voters. I'm Dan, and until next time, let's continue to occupy democracy.